Romans chapter number 12 in the New Testament section of the Bible, just immediately after the book of Acts. If you're in Revelation, you've gone too far. If you're in Deuteronomy, oh God, shout for help because you are too, too far from it. You're in the Old Testament. We're in the New Testament era. Praise God. I say this on purpose because you need to realize the importance of familiarizing yourself with the word of life. Everybody, young, old, and in between, must be so familiar to the scriptures that when they mention a book, at least you have an idea where it is. If they mention a book in the Old Testament and yeah, you are in Revelation, I, I, I have to worry. I have to really go into seven days praying and fast to repair, you know, to correct what is wrong. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Romans chapter number 12. Well, to those of us who have been here in the past few weeks, you know, we have been deliberating on the gifts of the Spirit. We must also understand that this gift is very, very important to you and to me as a child of God. We started with the manifestation gift of the Holy Spirit. When we say the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift that the Holy Spirit gives, the Holy Spirit of promise that is in you. Hallelujah. Everybody, please pay attention. No playing, please. This is not a playground. This is the church. The, God, the presence of God is he's here. He sees you. He might just give you a knock on your head if you're not paying attention right now. Everybody, listen to me. Everybody, listen. Everybody, listen. No playing. Amen. Don't pass anything around now, please. Turn in your Bibles. Everybody. I was I have to move some people. Go and sit next to uh, apostle, mommy, uncle. Hallelujah. That's what it takes to get your attention. So be it. Hallelujah. The gift that is given to all believers by the Holy Spirit. And for the sake of those joining today, perhaps... I'm going to say a few things so that we don't lose you. This message is very, very important to you as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we're about wrapping up at least this session today. So we began with the manifestation gift that is given to all believers by the Holy Spirit. And this manifestation gift, we nicknamed them as the tools of your trade, which means God has given you a trade from heaven. The mama did not give you this trade. Your papa did not give you the trade. Hallelujah. Your school teacher did not give you this trade we're talking about. You did not learn this trade in school. But God, your maker, gave you and wired in your DNA this trade. And he says, this is the reason why I am sending you onto the planet Earth. This is the reason I put you in the womb of your mother. Amen. This is your assignment on the face of the planet. So go forth. I want you to understand, out of over 400 million sperm cells that your papa injected into that womb, you had swam them all. So you're already a champion. You came to the planet Earth with a warhead of a champion. Nothing can hinder you. No demon, no devil bad enough to hinder you except you fail to realize who you are and what your assignment is. And he fully equipped you to be successful at your assignment. And the manifestation gift are the tools to aid you in fulfilling this assignment in life. If you have some tools, you better understand he gives you a clue as to you having a purpose. You are not just here by chance. Hallelujah. Everyone here, young, old, and in between, no matter your gender, 
you have a purpose. There's a reason you are here in this service today. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says when we gather in the name of the Lord, he's there in our midst. God is right here. Better believe that. Amen. Hey, young lady, go and sit with that here at the back. Zaman, quick. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So, we began sharing these nine manifestation gifts that is also called the tools of your trade found in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 from verse, uh, <coughs> verse 6 down to verse 10 or verse 8 down to 10 actually from verse 8 down to 10 at uh, 10. But we began reading from verse 1. Praise God. But we concluded that, at least for this stage, and then we moved on to your trade. Why am I here on the face of the planet? So the book asked us to turn to, found in Romans chapter number 12, began to also list some talents, divine talents, divine gifts that God, the Holy Spirit, also has given you as a believer in Christ Jesus, the one who has a purpose from God, who has an assignment, who has a reason to live. You are not here by chance or not by coincidence. That's a reason God sent you forth. Hallelujah. He told a prophet in the Old Testament, amen. He says, before I found you in the womb of your mother, I knew you and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. And I'm saying to you, God ordained you, gave you an assignment before he put you in the womb of your mother. And you're about to discover that purpose. Amen. That is the essence of of this ministration. Praise God forevermore. Perhaps you are doing something. You see, this purpose is not what you have chosen for yourself. Some of us, we have chosen some things for ourselves. <clears throat> but eventually you will discover what God ordained for you to do. Then you can make some adjustment if you're wise. Because there is a way that seems right to a man. The end thereof is destruction. If what you are doing is not ordained by God, you are not equipped to successfully discharge your duties. You are going to fail. Thus say the Lord. Hmm. So, when you discover your purpose, you, if you are wise, you have to change with immediate effect an automatic alacrity. If you have that word before, amen, somebody. It means you just have to change with utmost urgency and reconcile to the will of God for you. Amen. So we began reading. We began reading. Let's read together, shall we? Romans chapter number 12. We read from verse... Uh, Praise God. We read from verse 8 down to 10. Praise God. That's our anchor text right now. We began this last week. Praise God. And I'll do our best to cut our fill in on some of the things that was said, but not all because of time. God got a lot to cover today. It says, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. No, 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 no. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. I didn't want to go that far back. Uh, hallelujah. Mm. Let's go back to... Okay. Let's start from verse 4. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Go back to 6, please. Verse 6. Verse 6. Oh. You know, I'm reading Corinthians. You know, I knew something was wrong. All of a sudden. Uh, Romans. I said Romans. Yes, but I'm reading. I'm in a different book. My fault. You are right where you're supposed to be. But I just, for some reason, I'm in Corinthians. Okay. I'm on the same page with you now. I beg your pardon. Okay. From six. Okay. Now, these are your operation gift. This gift is also called your talent. These are the supernatural gifts that God has placed in the body of Christ, in the church. Every believer belongs to at least one of these gifts or have at least one of these gifts. Amen? There are, there are seven in number. Okay? Just like your, your body parts has many members to it. You have the head, you have the nose, you have the hands, you have your finger, you have your feet, you have your toes. You know, you know what I mean? You have your teeth, you have your mouth, and so on and so forth. So in the body of Christ, every believer belongs to at least one of these members. Even though we have several members in the church, but we all need one another to function effectively well. If your toe is missing, you know you have some problems. It might not be much, but you have some problems. You can never function perfectly like you're supposed to function, right? <clears throat> if one eye is missing, you, may, you know, if you have a toothache, one, eight, one, 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 one tooth decides to play up. You have problems. In fact, the rest of your body will have problems. You know that, don't you? You have a slight headache. It affects the whole of your body. The same thing here. Until you discover your niche in the body of Christ, the body will struggle to function like it's supposed to function. Amen. So that is why we can't have someone playing and mocking about we need your input in the body of Christ. You know, imagine there is no there is no uh, imagine Pastor Patrick is not here. For a start, none of you will be here. Amen. None of you will be here. Imagine your head is not there. You will be alive. You will be in the mug. You understand what I'm saying? That is how important you are. Amen. And I pray that you discover who you are, your identity, so that you begin to arise and shine and begin to be a blessing to your generation. Amen. That's the reason why God released you in this dispensation. And not have released you in 1426. <laughs> have you thought about that? That's the reason why you are not existing or living in 1427. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's read verse 6. So, he began saying, Having then gift differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, this is the first member. Prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Verse 7, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth. With diligence. He that showed mercy. With cheerfulness. Hallelujah. Now. You imagine. If your. Purpose. Is to show mercy. And you are looking so miserable. Who 
are you going to be a blessing to? You imagine that. I mean, you can easily do it. If that is your purpose, but you don't know, you'll be looking miserable. When someone is looking up to you to be a blessing unto them, you're looking so serious. Mm -hmm. Look, I don't, I don't feel like I don't, want, I don't want to be here. Hallelujah. You know, some of you that are supposed to be uh, maybe showing mercy, maybe supposed to be the ones standing by the door, greeting everybody with a good handshake and a nice welcoming smile on your face. Welcome. Good to see you in the house of the Lord today. But you are looking miserable. What kind of an usher or greeter will you be? If you meet such a person, if you meet yourself on the door coming to church, oh God, your anointing can just disappear. <laughs> you know, I'm going back home. I don't want to be here today. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is so serious. And this is what happens. That's why we've got to discover this thing. You've got to. Praise God. Now, I made us understand that the discovery of your gift given to you by God, your talent given to you by God, is a clue to your purpose on the face of the earth. If you have a plumbing tools, then your purpose is plumbing, right? You will say, maybe I'm an electrician. But you have a plumbing tools. Are you with me? Yes. Praise God forevermore. Now, the mere fact that you, you happen to discover that you have a mouth and a tongue in between your teeth. And, a, and your jaw has, has been made in, other, uh, in such a way that it's flexible. It can move up and down. It means you are designed, you are expected to say some things. Now and again. Right? Yes. You don't have to pray about that to know that. Then you are, someone says, I'm quiet. Don't you know that the devil is deleting you? You got mouth, you got... And then he said, oh, I'm quiet. I'm so shy, I can't say anything. Say something. Sing. You're looking at him. Sing. That's the devil fighting you. Because you have a mouth. You have the equipment to do what you are asking to do. What you are being asked to do. You have to use it. And that's how God sees it. If you are not using your equipment, if you are not fulfilling your purpose in life, he's not going to go well on the judgment day. He says, you are wicked, go and lock him up. I don't have time to go there. We've been there before. But for those who are perhaps joining on this, somebody needed to hear that. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. do I discover my purpose number one by knowing the talents found here the seven of them knowing all these seven gifts then you have a great opportunity to discover your niche and by knowing the characteristics of each of these gifts and there are weaknesses perhaps Praise God. The reason they have weaknesses is because God will not give you anything that will replace his need. Your reliance on him in your life. Nothing God gives you will replace his need of him in your life. No spouse, no children, not even money, not even good health. Some of you are thinking, well, if I can get married right now, if you can give me a good spouse, all my problems will be over. You're wrong. That is why even when God gives you the best partner in the whole wide world, there will still be moments of issues. Yes, it's not for you to get rid of the spouse. No, it's for you to run to him and say, oh God, help me here. Have you some directions right here? That's what it is. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. Except the Lord build the house, they that build it only live up for the faith. Don't say, and I'm cool. I've got the best spouse in the whole world. world. I don't need to go to church. Let Pastor Pastor just stuff his own stuff and program right there. I'm too busy. 
I'm enjoying with my family now. I've got my bunch of kids. Look at them. They are doing fine. Oh, that kid is coming home one day with a problem that not even the doctors can diagnose. Then you know, God, help me with this child. Oh, 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 oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you better hear what you're hearing right now. Oh, I've got a good paying job. I'm traveling all over the world. I don't have time to go to church. I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to read my Bible. Oh, watch this. They're about to sack you one day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not a curse. If you don't leave the job, the job will leave you. But you might fall sick. And you can't go to that job again. Then you go to the rest of God. Heal me. Please heal me. If you can heal me, I will serve you for the rest of my day. You are a liar. He knows he has tried you with something little. You messed up. May that not be you in the name of Jesus. You have a purpose. You have a purpose. The first gift mentioned there is called or that gift is talent, the ability that God has placed in you. Prophecy or proclaiming. I like to use the word proclaiming instead of prophecy because prophecy sounds as if it's limited to the church. This gift, they are not limited. It affects your vocation. You need them out there also in your place of work. That's right. Proclaiming are those people with a gift with a passion, always, you know, they like to talk. They just like to talk. Evangelists, they have this kind of gift. <laughs> but many of them don't even know it, unfortunately. Okay? You also notice this kind of people, they are very good in sales. Listen. You might be doing a work in some place. They make you a trainer somewhere. You are training a, a bunch of people at work. This gift transcends the church, just your church activities only. Okay? It's useful in the open field out there. You got to understand. You got to discover what you got. Because your gift will take you before kings and cause you to shine and take you before noble people where you will be appreciated, where you will be remunerated. Hallelujah. That's what we're talking about. Proclaiming. It has its uh, strong points. It has not so strong points also. But unfortunately, I don't have time to go through each of them like that. Uh, so I just want to skim over some of these things. And then perhaps we come back and do a revision and then we also get you involved, asking some questions, you know, and so on and so forth. But we're going to do our best to, for you to really enjoy and make it worth your while in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. So that's proclaiming our prophecy, as it's mentioned right there. Hallelujah. These are the people who just love to talk. You like to express or communicate something to another. Amen. Amen. These are the kind of people that you can say, oh, it must be an extrovert. You know? Everywhere you go, you, the place will, will be lively. Hallelujah. Now, if you know your purpose in life, then you are 50% successful already. But if you don't, you already fail. Because if you don't, you'll be pursuing the wrong thing. And when you pursue the wrong thing, you are not equipped to succeed in that area. You have to work like 10 times harder than you should. Amen. And at best, you'll be a copycat. Somebody will always outshine you at best. After you work 10 times harder, somebody will always outshine you. So you don't give yourself the right kind of attention you're supposed to give yourself. And you may die before your time. In fact, most of the time, if you don't know your purpose, you're likely 99.5% of the time you die before your time. <laughs> That's very scary, right? It gets better. The second gift right there mentioned, mentioned the word uh, ministry. The word ministry is another word for service. Service. Every believer, by the way, according to Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, says every believer has a ministry. Every believer is a minister. So it says all the fivefold giftings 
they are supposed to train, equip, edify, hallelujah, and release you into your ministry, what you're supposed to do. So you have a ministry. The word ministry here is another word for helps. Those who like to get involved in practical things. Get things organized practically. Hallelujah. You like to help people achieve things. You know, take over. Do the practical things. Organize. You don't have to do it all by yourself. You can get other people involved to get it done. Hallelujah. You'll be the one that makes sure the service will run smoothly. Make sure the PA is working properly. Make sure all the chairs are arranged. Make sure everything is organized nicely so that the pastor doesn't have to have uh, distraction in that area. Praise God. That's what is called ministry right there. One of these gifts is a dominant gift that God has placed in you. Please, I'm going somewhere. I want you to follow very, very well. It's not the kind of message you shout, 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 shout. Just enjoy yourself. You're about to discover yourself. I said in the beginning, I wish I discovered this when I was uh, like age two. That's right. When I was age two, someone to talk to me like this. In the body of Christ, you don't hear messages like this. You don't. You don't. A few places you might hear it. They say it's a, it's a seminar. Come for a seminar. And then you'll be too busy to attend that seminar. So you're completely oblivious of what's going on. Then you are praying. You are praying. You are praying. Do you know that the goal of praying or prayer is to fulfill your God-ordained assignment? Oh, you don't believe it? Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Jesus says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. You don't you, you think the focus of your prayer is uh, God heal me, I need a new car, I need a new husband, I need a new wife, you know what I mean? I need more kids. After you had 10 already. Because the, the more kids you have, particularly in this part of the world, is business for you. They pay your social this, social that. They give you a whole house bigger than the whole of the street. <laughs> well, in those days. But now, I understand they've changed all that now. Even if you have spare room now, they charge you for it. I said, good. Hallelujah. Listen, listen to what you're hearing right now. <laughs> you, you, you just have to pay attention to talk the line that God will have you to tow. Hallelujah. So, these are people in the helps ministry. We call them ministry of helps. Making sure everything is in place. You know, you don't have to wait until the pastor asks for a, a, a napkin because of sweat to wipe the sweat. You know, that someone will have provided that. Hallelujah. So as soon as you see that the sweat is coming on, you don't wait. You just go there and give it. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm going somewhere. I'm just trying to explain, give you an idea before we hit it. You will discover your purpose today. Amen? Amen. I've got some exercises here. Don't miss it. You don't want to miss it. You probably don't, won't hear this again. Anyway, watch this now. Verse number seven still. It says, this is the third one. It says, uh, or he that teacheth on teaching. The word teaching simply means those with the gift or with the, with the desires and the inspiration to explain certain things. Not only, it's not limited to Bible alone. Okay? It's not limited to Bible alone. If you are a good explainer, if you are a good teacher, you'll be a good leader. You can motivate a whole team, develop a whole department because you are able to teach them. You understand me? A, B, C, D. This is how you do this. This is why you do it. This is how you do it. If you don't do it this way, this is what's going to happen. 
You have that patience. It's a grace of God. It's an ability that God gives. Some, some people don't have patience. Have you ever tried someone teach you how to drive? You Maybe your husband, you ask your husband to teach you how to drive. Oh God, you almost end up in divorce court. Right from there because <laughs> you got on the man's nerves. He hasn't got the patience to teach you how to drive. I told you, don't press the brake while you are. Oh God. Then you say, after you talk to me like that, oh, you are not loving your soul. From there, okay, 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 okay. Just drive straight to divorce court. Oh God, may that not be your case in Jesus' mighty name. But listen to this. It's, it, it's, it's not nice to say that. But it's so true. God has made graces available to people to function in that area. If you are in a church, there is no one to painstakingly teach you the word of God you are done for. My people perish for lack of knowledge. If all you got is somebody to yell at you and yell at you and say, shout, amen, don't try it one time. I say you are done for. Because if you are ignorant, hey, you are in bondage. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are, are you getting what I'm saying? That's why God placed uh, uh, place all these uh, gifts in the body of Christ. We need your input in the church. Praise God. You can only impact the church if you know who you are, what you're supposed to be doing. Verse number eight. Or he that exhort, uh, he that exhorted on exhortation. The word exhortation is another word for encouragement. You know, someone who stimulates another's faith. You can do it, brother. You can do it. You can do it. Hallelujah. Don't give up. You can do it. You can do better than that. Amen. You can do it. You are more than conquerors. You are the head and not the tail. God is with you. Amen. That devil is a liar. Amen. Is that you? Let's read on. Praise God. He that giveth, let him give or do it with simplicity. The word simplicity simply means do it. Don't, don't, be, don't make it complex. Don't be arrogant about it. Do it with humility. You understand? Don't do it to make a show. You understand? There are people that God has placed, that are gifts that God has given to people in the church. You might be sitting here right now. Your mind looks at, okay, how is this church being financed? That's your mind. And you are saying, Lord, give me an idea. Lord, bless me. Make a way for me. So that they don't have to stress for anything, at least financially. Whatever money can buy, make a way for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Make a way for me. So that they don't have to worry about it. Maybe every service, maybe the budget is 400 pounds every, every service. Whether people come or not, 400 pounds, 400 pounds. And God will be, you know, there will be as placed gift in the church. They will be thinking, Lord, you can count on me. Make a will for me. Let me be the one that will put at least 400 pounds in the, in the offering bowl. So at least they don't have to worry about the budget. Others will be extra saved up for other things that will be necessary to be done. Oh yeah, there are people like that. There are gifts like that in the body of Christ. That's what this is saying. Look at the next one. Hallelujah. He that ruleth with diligence. What does it mean to rule? Those who are gifted with the administrative gift. Those who can really plan and organize things. At the leadership level. You understand? At the leadership level. It says do it with diligence. Do it consistently. Do it with, with, with 
you know, with consistency. Don't, don't, you are not the one that, okay, I'll show up this Sunday, next Sunday I will show, I don't know, maybe three weeks time, uh, maybe I'll come back. I don't, I'm not sure. You know, after three weeks, I might be away for another 25 weeks because I'm so busy. Uh-uh. With consistency. You see that the responsibility that you have, that'll be your niche. That'll be your role. And God expects you to be faithful in whatever role he has given you to do. Amen. Praise God. Ah. <coughs> and the seventh one is this. He says, showeth mercy. This simply means, he said, do it with cheerfulness. This simply means these are people with the heart of compassion. You know, Jesus, we were told everywhere he went, he was doing good. He's a mighty healer. If he meets people who are going for funeral service, he will raise the dead. That's the end of funeral. They just be celebrating now. The food they are planned to after the burial becomes the party food. Celebration food. Hallelujah. Showing mercy. These are people like Mother Teresa kind of people. You understand me? You know, you have that compassion. Someone in need it's like you put yourself in their shoes. Some of this, this person with, in, in trouble, some of them need. They might even be sick or something. And then you are there to help them. You are there to help them. Is that you? Now watch this. Our goal today is to, for you to discover your dominant gift. You have at least one of these in dominance in your life. One of these seven. Praise God. I've got a little exercise here that we're going to do. I'm going to give you uh, a document for you to go through, answer some questions right there. It's about you. So it's not about me. So anybody can do it. Hallelujah. If you're of school age, you can do it. And I want everybody to do it. The sooner our children discover their niche on the face of this planet. They will not end up in Tesco's or Sainsbury's. You understand me? They will not end up where they're not supposed to end up. And of course, they'll be more useful in the kingdom of God also. And definitely they will shine. Nothing can hinder them or stop them from shining like they ought to shine. Amen? Amen. Does that sound good to you? Hallelujah. You're not looking very happy. I'm, but I'm glad the young ones are smiling. The adults are looking very serious. Oh, Lord, you're about to take some exam. It's not an exam. You're about to discover yourself. You probably live a number of decades on the face of the earth. Just trying things out. You don't have much time to try stuff out. You've got to know what you're doing. You want to spend another 10 years trying stuff out that you have no business doing in the first place? So when Jesus comes, you say, oh, I didn't know I'm to do that. But Jesus has come, the rapture is taking place. Off you go. <laughs> then you explain yourself when you get up there what you've been doing. Hallelujah. That is my exercise today at this, at this, at this point in time. I'm going to start with the apostle here. Hallelujah. Apostle will help us to serve the others. Hallelujah. Praise God. If I can get it. Yeah, just, just let me take the top one. Because that one is already used. Okay. Yes, sir. If you give everybody one one. Everybody. Sure. Young and the old. Wow. Everybody. Young and the old. Very, very easy. And I'll do some extra I've got some extra if that will not go around. Everybody, as long as you have school age, everybody should do it. And you can do it. Wait for my instructions though. Hallelujah. Everybody means everybody. Praise God. Unless you are still in the creep, then you are not of school age yet. You might be in the crash. School age. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Everybody got it? Get a pen out or pencil, something to write with. You have to do something. You have to participate. 
you are not going to be looking at me. If you need a pen, ask someone who's got extra. Please. Hallelujah. Now, you should have three page document in front of you. Three page document. In some cases, you might have two sheets, but three pages. In some cases, you might have three sheets and three pages. Okay? But at the end of the day, you have three page document in front of you. You need a pen or a paper. Ah, I'm sorry, not a paper. A pencil or something to write with, please. Please listen to this explanation. There are questions here being asked from number one down to number whatever number. Let me see. Let me check. On page two, we'll, we'll tell you the number. Second page. 35 questions you have here. This is to help you discover your dominant gift. How many don't know what I mean by dominant gift? You know, your gift that is the strongest. The gift that is the strongest in your life. You have at least one. Now watch this now. You read question number one, you try to answer it by either zero, one, two, or three. You write the figure in front of each question, please. If you need a pen, raise up your hand. Go find a pen from somewhere, please. Or pencil. It's okay, you can use pencil if you want. Please get involved. Get involved. I've done this even in bigger meetings than this. I've seen men and women of God's ministry being transformed. Because all of a sudden they discover they have not been paying attention to really... <laughs> The main thing they're supposed to be paying attention to. So, you put one, zero, or two as an answer to the question. Now, let me also say that because some of us, if not all, may not have been in a ministerial position. This is not only related to ministry. I know sometimes the question is, is asked in a way that it sounds like, you know, is referring to your experience in ministry? No, don't. Please don't keep it like that. Let me explain a few things. Hold on, please. Please listen to me, please. Please. I don't want you to make mistakes. Don't answer it in a kind of what you wish to do. For example, if he ask you, are you interested in helping someone get a job done? You've never been in ministry before. You've never been active in church before. But you live somewhere. Are you interested even in keeping the house tidy and clean? Mm -hmm. Helping mommy perhaps. Helping daddy perhaps. You understand what I'm saying? Aside from that perspective, if you are the one that is not interested, you just want to, I'm not interested. I don't like doing house chores. I don't like helping this other you know what I'm saying? Aside from that perspective. Yes? Am I clear? You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So answer them, put all your answers in front. This document is yours forever. Okay, by the way. Okay. Please. Okay. If you have a particular question in any of the numbers there. Raise up your hand and I'll come close to you and try and uh, help you out. Hallelujah. If you don't understand what is asking or whatever, you know. So don't just limit it to ministerial situation. Even at work. How have you been performing in that question at work? You know? You like to help someone in, in trouble. Maybe at work. Or even on the street. Or at home. If your brother or your sister is supposed to be having a problem doing something at home that mom or dad has asked him or her to do, are you willing or interested in helping him or her complete the task? Or, you know, encourage them to do it? Aside from that perspective too, if that is your experience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody's got a pen. Now, don't try to discover somebody else's gift. Focus on you and you only. 
Now, also, don't answer it from a wishful kind of a mindset. Oh, I like you. For people to think that I like to help you. No. Don't try to impress anybody. Be truthful to yourself. Do you interest it to help somebody in need? Are you interested? Are you eager? Are you desiring to, you know? Are you hungry? <laughs> are you hungry? Yes. Yes. Are you hungry for it? Are you hungry to do it? Yes. Are you hungry to be a blessing? Are you interested in doing these things? Or somebody has to force you? Do you have to be forced? You know? Do you leave your bedroom untidy at home? And they have to force you to put your shoes where they're supposed to be. But then you go out, you like to now let pretend and want people to think that you are that organized. That kind of thing, you know. Arrange it. Answer it to discover who you are, really. What God has put in you. Answer it from that perspective. Hallelujah. All questions must be answered also. Again, if you stop on any question, ask for help. Put up your hand, I'll come help you. Okay? I'll come assist you to get there, to answer. We're going to have some fun doing this. Praise God. You must know your identity. You must know yourself. You must have an idea why you think the way you think. Why you do what you do. Why your interest is in certain things and, uh, you know, or you, how, how, why you like to get involved in certain things. Praise God forevermore. You don't look down on yourself. Praise God. And may also understand the school that you attend, that you go to right now, really has nothing to do with your divine purpose in life. That's all purely to do with the earth, the planet that you are today, to, be, to, to, to learn how to be literate, to function, to interact on the planet today. That is as far as that goes. The real stuff is what you have been wired to do on the face of the planet. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. We should be getting close to page two now, if you're not there already. Rabaka Rabako Sobrolo Sotoyekehi. Harabako Ribesikeriaka Shataya. Every believer ought to go through this from the beginning of their work with God. It makes a lot of things easier. We put people in departments that they are not meant to be. Some of us look for jobs. We have no business doing at all. You start looking for jobs in the area of your expertise and at the end of the day you'll be happy right there because you're going to shine anyway. They may not be offering the best kind of wages in the beginning but when you are shining they come to appreciate you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Folks, you're welcome sirs. We are trying to discover our purposes in life. If an angel comes to you tonight, in your night hour, and say, what's your purpose in life? Why are you on the face of the planet? Why are you in London? For all you know, maybe you're supposed to be in Timbuktu. You're supposed to be in Timbuktu as opposed to London. So we're trying to discover. We're going through some exercises that will help us to discover. Have an idea. That's what we're doing. You want to have a go? You want to have a go? Yes, yes I invite them to have a go. Okay. Pastor, if you pass these documents to them. Or somebody, Pastor. We've got three documents there. Gentlemen, this document is yours forever, but you need, you need a pen, you need a pencil, 
something to write with. It's a three-page document. You've got 35 questions about you. You are the only one that can answer it because you are the one. Okay. Hallelujah. You need a pen? If you need a pen, find one, please. Someone who has extra can also yes. let you have one. This is very, very interesting. We don't have to live life gambling. You've done it before, sir. Okay. Good. Good. Then you, you, has it helped you? Are you complying with what you discover about yourself? You? Good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Right. We should be wrapping up now, or at least on page two. And then we're going to discuss very interesting things. Listen. Some of us are just starting, just carry on. If you need any particular help, to those who are not in ministry, it's not limited to ministry only. Use your day-to-day -day life at home, at school, to answer it. Don't answer it in what you wish to become. Okay? That is not a good, that, that's not a good, a good way to answer it. We want to know the reality about you, finding out how you have been coping and performing in these areas. <laughs> The, the uh, question is asking you. Use your own situation. Hallelujah. Are you that organized? Organize your bedroom. Organize your shoes, your clothes. Or you just leave them all over the place. And then you answer the question, oh, I like to make sure the church is organized. Listen to me. Try to keep it at home. Mm. You understand that kind of stuff? Don't do that. You like to help people? Are you helping at home? You helping mama, you helping papa, you helping whatever in the house. But you want to help out, outside. It's, it's like, you know. Don't, don't answer it from that perspective. That's how to be really honest with yourself. Okay? Not wishful thinking. I wish I could do this. Oh, I would love to do that. Because I saw someone done that, and they, are, they become so popular, so I want to do it too, so maybe I'll become popular like them. No, that, that's not what this is for or about. Hallelujah. Right, if you're done, go to page three, please. If you got into page two, you finish answering the questions. On page three, I will go over this again for those that are still or are just starting. Answer the question, all of them, please. Otherwise, page three does, does, does not make sense. Answer all the 35 questions, both on pages one and two. Everybody should have a go at this, please. Everybody. I've had people's ministry radically transformed. I took a class year before the last in Kenya. This class was the best class. Every believer need to come through this class. All my students, they came out with first class honors. Ministries were tra transformed. Many doing what, what they have no business doing. Okay. Now, let, let that finish. That you want to finish what you're doing. We'll discuss that later on. Praise God. Thank you. Right. Page number three, if you need help, is self-explanatory. You know, uh, the number you have for question one, if it's two, for example, you put two in the A column and number one box. Yes? That's what it was for. Then you go to question number eight in the A column. If you're Answer there is zero, you put zero there. Now, make sure those who are still working, don't distract them, please, if they are still working. All right, we'll leave the discussion till when everyone is finished. Hallelujah. Everybody understood how to do number three, uh, page three, how to find their way around? I mean, to deal with that, praise God. And on page three, the interpretation of each row is there at the bottom. Relating to each one of these seven gifts that we read in the scriptures, 
Romans chapter 12. Praise God. All questions must be answered, whether it's a zero, one, two, or three. Hallelujah. We're going to discuss this. Hallelujah. Some of you discover how you think the way you think. How your interest, you know, is the way it is. Praise God. If any child needs help, if you are sitting close, you can help them. Go ahead and help them. Don't answer the question for them. Assist them in answering the question. Amen. Because you are not that person. You are unique. And they are also unique. All right? Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't try to score yourself. The maximum score, everyone, everyone. You are only delivering yourself. Okay? Don't try to do that at all. Be honest. God has not given us the spirit to lie. Thou shalt not lie. You only deceive yourself. I ain't giving you no money for this. Hallelujah. But just to help you so that you can hear, well done, thou faithful servant. You can't fake anything that you don't have. You can only give that which you have. Amen. Oh, don't say, oh, my, my, my brother is scoring this in that area. No, I have to score high too. No, don't do that. Even if you are twins, identical twins, you are unique. Amen? Praise God. Are we all on page three now? You've done it before too? You suddenly remember that you've done it before. Okay. That's interesting. Hallelujah. 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 When I have the chance, my discussion with you, and even what you do right now, you know, will be tailor-made to you so that you really have help in life to do that which you're supposed to do and enjoy it. And to make a change if necessary, if per adventure you are just doing something, in quote, for the time being. And this time being has been a number of years now. Any time you spend doing what you are not equipped to do, you are wasting your time. Question. You are wasting your time. Even they are giving you stipends doing it. You are wasting your time. The stipend they are giving you is not going to meet your need anyway. I don't need to leave with you to know that. And you already know that. So, you don't need to get into argument. And I wonder what I want to say to you. Everything that God has ordained for you to do, if you believe Him for it, He will make a way for you to get exactly what you need to get and to do it. That you will be ordained for. And you will shine there. You don't even have to have papers. Was Joseph an Egyptian citizen? No. Become a prime minister. He was a common criminal, right? To them. <laughs> an illegal immigrant, a slave to make it worse. An illegal immigrant has a higher status than Joseph was of her. <laughs> that would Mold somebody. Children don't have to end up walking in the test when they are wonderfully made by God. Amen. Get anywhere. Amen. Praise God. And in our churches, we need to engage people in the right department so that they will be funded. They will be trained high than This week they are in church. The next week, we will find them. The next three weeks, they are complaining about jobs. Hallelujah. Are we all done? Page three. With the exception of Pastor Patrick, who started late. All done. All seem to. Yes. Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's have some fun now. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Everybody, come to page three if you're done. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can I ask for. Russia, can I can I ask for your paper? Can I? No. Okay. Okay. Keep it. Glory. Can I? Can you volunteer? <laughs> Let me ask for yours. I'll give it back to you. I just want to. I didn't want to spy or anything. God made you. I didn't make you. Whatever He put in you is excellent and perfect. Not one gift is more important than the other. I want you to understand that. Will you say your arm? is more important than your head? Or your head is more important than your nose? Listen. You have an ordinary toothache, then you will know. 
<laughs> yeah, you will know. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, it's nothing to every gift is extremely important. Praise God. Now also, by the way, with time, as you are obedient in dispensing that which he has given you or using that which he has given you, he promotes you. The other gift also increases, increases it in your life. Okay? Those of you that were here last week, I mentioned something along those lines. You use the parable uh, story in, in, in Matthew 25 and uh, Luke chapter 19 as an example for this, you know, hallelujah. Now, you will discover right here in the one I have in front of me, I don't want to use myself, I, 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 my own case is not a, is not a, is an ab, ab, abnormal case, if you know what I mean. Let me just use, let me use this. It's a, it's a young lady, I, I like this particular example. Because this is true to form, raw, honest, not trying to create an impression that probably you are not, you know. Now, in this case, the result shows that a dominant gift is someone with the patience to explain. The Bible calls it teaching, to explain. In this particular scenario, okay, this particular is, uh, report I have in front of me happens to be her dominant gift. Let me say this. This is how, how it works. You will discover that your dominant gift is the first foot you will always put forward. When you meet somebody, in any capacity, even at school, you will discover that your dominant gift will be your approach. Even in meeting new people, in making friends, in operating at school, at work, wherever you may find yourself. Even at home, you realize that, you know, even with your siblings, you know, you have the, the gift of the gap or the... the, the the passion to approach things from that perspective. You want to explain in this report that I have. Your own dominant gift might be different from this. I'm just using this to explain. Okay? Now, let me read a particular case study. Praise God. And then we look at yours. I ask some questions from everybody. Amen? Now... There is a situation at work, perhaps. Somebody at work fell sick, admitted in the hospital. Okay? Listen to this. This is just to further explain uh, how these gifts work so that you can further recognize your gift. Amen? Now, somebody is ill or sick or admitted in the hospital. It doesn't matter the agenda. Okay? If your dominant gift is prophecy, for example, okay, or proclaiming, or a proclaimer, which is the same as prophecy, okay. This is, and then you, 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 you uh, go to the hospital, and then you are standing by the bedside of the one, the patient who is sick in the hospital. A proclaimer will say, are you alright? That will be your, like, your first approach. Are you alright? You know, they want to know, are you alright? They want to know, you may want to know, are you alright with your food? Are you alright with God if you want to tie to church or spiritual things? Are you all right, want to find out if they are alright with God? Because if you should die, hey, better settle with Jesus now so that you don't end up in hellfire. You understand that? The proclaimer will say things to that effect. Are you alright with God? You know... Are uh, you all right health wise? I mean, the kind of food you eat in case is the food you know is the trying to establish. Because if you are not eating right, are you supplementing your diet? That kind of stuff. Because if you are not supplementing your diet, that's the reason why you're on this bed, you know, that kind of stuff. 
They want to. A proclaimer is the one who wants to, who likes to talk. He, he wants to proclaim something. He wants to give you good, sound, blessed information. Okay, a proclaimer is different from a teacher. Watch this. A server or someone in ministry, a minister, so to say, the second gift, will approach the same person in the hospital this way. He will tell them, oh, Sister Cynthia, don't worry. I look after the house. I look after the pet. I take your dog for a walk. You just relax, concentrate, get well. I'll take over the practical things for you. Remember I described a server or a, a helper, someone in the helps ministry, you know, someone who takes, who enjoys doing practical things. You understand me? They enjoy, you know, practical things, you know. That's the kind of approach. A server whose dominant gift is to serve others. That's the, that would be the approach. The same patient. They take over responsibility of the things that they would normally do if they were not in the hospital. Okay? A teacher will approach the same person. Watch this. A teacher. Like the case study I have right here. The report I have right here. A typical teacher will say, you know, let me explain to you. They might not use these words, but they will be trying. Let me explain to you why perhaps you are not as healthy as you're supposed to be or you end up in this hospital bed. They will be trying to explain what is going on, what is happening, why they are sick, you know, and perhaps what they might need to do. You understand me? In a nice, nice, edifying manner to help the person perhaps discover the area of their folly, you know, so that it will not repeat itself next time. That will be the approach of a teacher. The one whose dominant gift is to teach. Okay? The exhorter, on the other hand, will approach it this way. Will encourage it. You know, the one that enthuses faith and encourages another. He will say, you know, you are going to be alright. Perhaps by his strife, you have already been healed, you know. Claim your healing, you know. Receive your healing. You understand me? The teacher might go forward and say, you know, you know, this is how you receive your healing, you know. You receive your healing, you, 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 you begin to even confess, you know, what the Bible says concerning your healing, and, and you'll be out in no time from this hospital. Things like that. Now, the giver will, will approach the same person, same person, you know. You will ask them, have you got your insurance paid up? If you are in America, for example, because you need your health insurance and everything is free here, national health is here. They might be finding out, you know, you have your, your rent paid up and things like that. Anything to do with financial. The giver will be trying to find out what he or she can do financially to help the lady. Maybe they've, they've been out of work because they've been in the hospital. So if you don't work, you don't get paid. So we're trying to see how they can replace your wages so that financially you are not hard up. That would be the approach of the giver. All of these approaches are very, very good and useful, but they are different in their ways. Now, the ruler, the one who administrates and so on and so forth, he says, we'll approach the same person and say, don't worry. I have got four other doing your job. Don't worry. I have deputized your job to four other people. So you don't have to worry that your job is not being done. You are stuck in the hospital right here. Worry yourself who's going to do your job or your work and so on and so forth. The ruler will approach you that way. Hallelujah. To help the, the same person. The one who shows mercy, who works with compassion, will approach uh, the same person and say, I feel so bad when I heard that you are lying on this bed. I wish I'm the one lying in this bed and yet you can go half free and go about your business. Let me pray for you, perhaps. You know, the one with compassion. Take the pain, the trouble of another upon themselves and help them out of it until they are out of it. Hallelujah. Now, you also would discover that you may have a couple of gifts that are a bit higher than the rest of them. Sometimes you may even have three. Sometimes. 
Sometimes you may even have four that are quite hard. But pay attention to your dominant gift. When the Bible talks about your gift will make room for you, it's referring to your dominant gift. Some of you might have two dominant gifts. That's also in order. Some might have two. Some may, may have two strong and the third one very close, maybe one, one number apart. You understand me? One might be, the highest might be 12 or 13, two 13s, and then the third one is 12. You, 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 you may be like that. What that is, simply means is, you know, these two gifts are very strong in your life. You'll be using those two gifts to approach people. In fact, these two gifts will be working together side by side. You could hardly tell when each gift will kick in in your particular case. Hallelujah. For example, you could be a proclaimer and also a strong teacher, powerful teacher. What a good combination. A good teacher that is able to talk. You have all the patience. A proclaimer may not necessarily have the patience. Oh, shout hallelujah, 21 today! Then the teacher comes to give you the rationale, the meaning of hallelujah in the first place. What hallelujah means? Why we have to say hallelujah? Why? What happened when you say hallelujah in the name of the spirit? How many angels will be dancing with you when you shout hallelujah? The teacher will add that to it. But the problem I don't have, oh, you're shouting hallelujah for one time. Hey! Everybody will be sweating, sweating. At the end of the day, you are tired. It's good. There's a place for it. But I'm just saying, when you add these other ones to it, they work perfect. You don't just be shouting, shouting without knowledge. When you have knowledge, you can duplicate. You know the reason why you got the result that you got. Then you can duplicate it every time. Praise God. Amen. The one who, swear, who shows mercy. They have compassion on people. When you see like the good Samaritan, you don't just walk away. You just can't walk away. You are compelled to help them. You forget about yourself now. You're not focused. You are not vacant. You are real. You are not vacant. There are people like is that you? Those who are in health ministry. Anyone here helps or ministry is your songs. Let me see your hand. That's your songs. That's B. That, is that the only song? Yeah, that's, that's B. Yes, yeah, service. That's B, yes. yes. Is that your songs? That's your songs. It's the only the song is number one. Yes? That's your dominant. Hallelujah. You like to do practical things. Get things done. Practical things. Praise God. That will be your, your first food that you always support. That's how you make most of your friends. Which one of Begin to check yourself and see what. <coughs> Hallelujah. Now, if you know who you are, then also your spouse, it will help your relationship. I won't, I won't be trying to change you, what God has made in you. I have to appreciate it. Hallelujah. And understand why you operate the way you operate. You say, I can't even rest for a minute. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying you don't rest, but uh, I'm saying that is you. That's how God has wired you. We have to let things also help you and enhance that thing God has called you to do. Amen? How many proclaimers do we have in the house? The strongest. Is that for real? What's your name? <laughs> talk to me, talk to me. You're a proclaimer, talk to me. Yes? Proclaim is number one, A, A, which is prophecy. I, I, okay, I usually watch your number one. Prophecy, I mean prophecy. If prophecy is your number one, let me see your hand. Okay, only one. There you go, you go. Sorry? Yes, just you, yes. Okay, young man, what's your highest? What's your name, first of all? Stephen. Okay, powerful Stephen. Anointed, full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. What's your song? Is that the only song you have, or you have more than one? <laughs> so teaching and simulating faith as exhortation. The same same mark. Yes? Or oh, teaching is higher than okay, but very close. The second one is close. By how many man? Teaching and that's powerful one. Yes, man. You have put up your hand. What's your highest? Yes. Is it D yes. That's it. 
What makes it that's ruling, 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 ruling. D is ruling. Z. No oh, so you have to know. Okay, sorry. Yes. yes. That's your song. Yes. Yes? Seems so. Seems so. Yes, it is. It looks like it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As is this stronger than teaching? No. Still not the to serve the level. Okay. They are the same level. Good. Now, these these Glory, come and get yours so you can look at it. It's powerful. Teaching and serving, wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Praise God. You have, you've got a bunch of teachers in the house. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. That's good. Without teachers, you are done for. There's no hope for anybody. No hope. Your sisters are very happy. Yeah, because you'll be giving them lots of uh, Russia, what's yours? Talk to me. Hey, she's, hey. oh God, she's put them away. You don't want anybody to know. Let's know who you are, please. Give me your strongest. Maybe you have four. <laughs> okay, give me your strongest. Highest mark. Let me. Danny boy, you're next. I'm coming to you. Danny, I want to hear your strongest. Come on, Russia. Three of them, your strongest. Same mark. Same mark. You right? The three of them. Sympathy, giving, and serving. Serving. Okay. Okay. That's powerful. That's powerful. That's powerful. Some of you, 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 you understand yourself better now, right? Why you behave the way you behave. Danny boy. Yes. You are next. <laughs> Prophet Joshua. Daniel. I'm, I can't hear you. Speak up. You are a proclaimer. Speak up. <laughs> I'm only joking. Eh? Sympathy. Sorry? Sympathy. Sympathy. That's the, the strongest. What's the process to sympathy? Sympathy. How many points are different? Two. Sympathy. And service. Oh, wonderful. Joshua. Joshua, you ready? That man, get ready. What's the closing? Ruling. How far is uh, proclaiming in your in those those two? Eight away. That's uh, that's very strong. It's your that fits you actually. Yes. That fits you very much. So. <coughs> very much so. You have the attention and you eager to express it. Praise God. Zama. Have you forgotten? You are got you got some great people in the house. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, Saman. And serving some far off. Good. Good. Yes, my ladies. Jemima and where's yours? Where's your people? Get it out. Just talk to me. What's the highest? How many? Four? Five? Wow. 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 Hey, you got you got some more time still on your right there. You are blessed. You are blessed. Hey, hallelujah. Yes. And number two is what? What's your second? Praise the name of the Lord. Pastor Bola, you got the highest right there. I know you will have like seven. No, no, not seven. <laughs> Maybe four or five highest. Just give me one. Wonderful. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, now, next time our discussion will be. Please, this is your document for life. Please, when you come to church. Because our next discussion, not next Sunday, okay? I'm not speaking next Sunday. But if we can bring it next Sunday, we can always talk on it one on one. I would, I would love to do that. There's a lot we need to talk based on this to, to talk into your particular situation and make you see some of the things that you have experienced in life, how you're doing, you know, with those uh, in those areas and so on and so forth. And what you need also need to continue and pay more attention to do. Hallelujah. In your particular uh, situation, in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. God can never lie. He cannot be mocked. Your prosperity in life, financially, materially, even spiritually, will come from it. 
It is from the obedience in this arena that Jesus will now promote you and give you and place you in one of these administrative office gifted. Amen. In the body of Christ. But this is for you to profit with in any sphere of life. In church, outside of the church, on the street, with strangers at work. Praise God. Your promotion will come as you excel in this arena. I promise you this in Jesus' mighty name. No one can beat you, beat you. You will stand out anywhere. But you must be aware. Don't try to be somebody else. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet.